Hi everyone. Last week, Lee and I were invited to a Sony press event in New York City to check out the brand new Sony Alpha 7 Mark IV mirrorless interchangeable lens camera. The objective was for Lee to soak in the new announcement and try this new camera for the first time. We drove to the airport on Monday last week. Lee, already not feeling well, hit peak sickness and she drove home from the airport and that left me for a few days to channel my inner snap chick. <laughs> now, after some experimentation, I simply decided to be me. I'm not as perky as snap chick, so I got my butt to New York City, got this new gear in my hands, and I met with some friends new and old. Now, one quick note on these press events that I don't want to ignore. We were all invited there because we make videos, write articles, and have all immersed ourselves in the world of imaging. To be clear, no one tells us what to say, write, or think. If you want to be skeptical about that, as I might be if I were in your shoes, you're not correct. I learned about the announcement of this camera at the same time as many of you did during Sony's live stream. I had a third row seat to it all among some of the most recognizable names in print and video. And I would rely on some of those names for their support because I'm not a regular Sony shooter and neither is Lee. Dual card slots, look at these ones right here. Wow, look at this little knob right here. Awesome. Pretty awesome. I didn't want an R4 to be announced, but after they announced it, now I want one. We do have some background using the A7R3 and Lee with an Alpha 9, but not as our regular gear. Also, I would be there for two days with the gear. So experienced photographer, not very experienced with Sony, and for a relatively short experience with the new camera overall. Therefore, I cannot call this a review. I can call it an overview or a preview. Now, what do we have here? We have 61 million pixels. That's a lot. We have 10 frames per second, that's a lot. We have 15 stops of dynamic range, that's a lot. We have real-time eye autofocus during video, not just still images. In the DSLR world, you had to choose between high resolution and fast frames per second. With these specifications, you don't have to choose. You have speed approaching a Nikon D5 with resolution exceeding a Nikon D850 in a body that's smaller than both. You have the E-mount with dozens of Sony lenses available, and you have third-party lenses and adapters on top of that. When mirrorless arrived on the scene, the speed and handling of mirrorless cameras couldn't hold up to DSLRs. Let's, let's be honest about that. Autofocus was lacking in speed and low-light situations. Uh, it was just slower overall, and they really were battery hogs. They've gotten better, a lot better. And now with the Mark IV, you have 567 phase detect autofocus points combined with the contrast detection capabilities of the camera. If you have experience with Sony, you already know how to set up the autofocus to your liking. There are a lot of options. If you're not familiar with those, do what I did. Set it up for tracking and prepare to be amazed. I set the camera to track the subject with only a half press. What that did for me was I'd find my subject, half press while it was in my selected focus area, 
And as the subject moves around or as I recompose the shot with the half press, the camera would actively and accurately track that subject around the frame. This isn't focus and recompose. This is focus, recompose, and have the camera still focusing on that subject as you recompose. When the eye, when it sees the eyes, it locks on the eyes. If the subject turns around, it reverts to the head. And if they turn back to the camera, you're back on the eyes quickly, instantly, as quickly as you can see it, the camera's tracking it. Lee was raving about this when she used the Alpha 9 last month, and I totally agree. I get it now. It makes it so you still have control over autofocus, but when you use these options and take advantage of them, I'm allowing the camera to use its AI, which makes my job easier. Over the course of the two days, we had the opportunity to work with some wonderful models in settings simple and some more complex. Yes, the lighting was set up for us, so there was a lot we didn't have to think about. It was balanced and it wasn't excessive. And what I mean by that is Sony didn't need to push excessive lighting, excessive brightness to keep the camera in a super low ISO mode and have the most favorable conditions possible. They weren't always ideal, but the camera performed equally well in all these situations, including when I snuck out a few times just out onto the streets of New York uh, just to see what was out there. I'm not, at, I'm not in New York all the time and it was great walking around with the camera. I shot primarily with the 24 to 70 f 2.8, uh, but I did arrange a swap with Ted Forbes to work with the 85 millimeter f 1.4 G Master. Both performed entirely as expected, worked seamlessly, and stayed out of the way while I worked in these target-rich environments. Lee's been talking about this a lot lately, that some cameras are fun to use and other cameras become almost invisible and allow you to get a job done. Nikon cameras have always filled that slot for me, but I see that in Sony after using this camera for a short period of time very quickly. Now, not that you can't get great photos with other cameras, you certainly can, but the utility of these new Sony cameras is at a point where the specifications, the flexibility to customize so much, and the AI, AI are making them invisible to use. It's working with you in concert with you to get the job done. One thing that I did do when Sony was assigning the gear to me for the event, I did request the vertical grip just because I already had used the sample cameras without the grip. They were tethered right after the press conference and I had used the Mark III in the past without it. So why not do something a little bit different? If you're in the camp that mirrorless cameras are too small for you and think there's not enough to grab onto, uh, this new grip does give you plenty to hold on to. Um, I worked mostly without a neck strap, which is not something that I usually do. It makes me nervous. With the grip, there's no doubt you could grab it any which way and really have the camera sturdy in your hand. That, that surprised me because these cameras are a smaller form factor. And I thought even with the grip, my pinky might hang out in funny ways or anything like that. And if you're a recovering event shooter like I am, um, if I did go back into that world, I would get the grip. Even without it, note that the Mark IV body is beefier than the Mark III was. Okay, let's get to the complicated part. I've always been primarily a Nikon shooter, uh, from film cameras to early DSLRs to more advanced DSLRs to mirrorless. Nikon has been my world, primarily. Uh, we here have more of their lenses and bodies than any other manufacturer's camera gear. So even working at a disadvantage in that I'm not an expert with Sony, one thing is very clear to me at this point in time. Sony was investing in full frame mirrorless interchangeable lens cameras while most of the other market leaders were advancing their DSLRs with mirrors. Like Nikon with the D500 and the D850, Nikon and Canon have certainly come to the table now with mirrorless cameras, and they're good. And they have new lens mounts, but Sony is that much further ahead, and it shows when you use the Alpha 7R Mark IV. It shows a lot. It's fast, it's smooth and refined. It rides the line between taking some control for you when you want it to, like with the artificially intelligent focus tracking, 
but it still keeps you in charge of the camera when you need to be and want to be. All with resolution and speed to spare for most circumstances. And this is not even their flagship sports camera for speed. That's the Alpha 9. That leaves the Alpha 7 Mark IV, the joint strike fighter of cameras, as far as I'm concerned. With my experience with it so far. The way that I was able to pick it up and work with it without a lot of training or experience speaks volumes. I certainly made mistakes. I realized I wasn't even shooting video in 4K for the first day and a half. And another user recommended that I not use the wide area focus when working in environments with a few different things going on that could confuse the subject detection. And when I was working that way, sometimes the, the tracking jumped around a little bit. Sony's not stopping at the body and lenses themselves. They also announced, this is so cool, their new microphone. It looks like it's from the future and it does act like it too. It's actually an array of eight small microphones in line with one another and they can work together to act as a shotgun mic or as an omnidirectional mic with the flip of a switch on the back. It has its own digital processor. When the audio goes from the microphone down to the camera, it's digitally communicating the sound information through the accessory port. No old analog cable from the mic to the camera, but it can also work with some previous Sony cameras in an analog mode, still without a cable. It's small, sleek, and it doesn't protrude behind the camera, meaning that the viewfinder is still in play when this microphone is mounted. I did some notional testing with it in an extremely noisy environment. It was hot and humid too, and it really seems to have delivered. And you should be able to hear me pretty well because we're in omnidirectional on the brand new And I'm behind the camera. Digital audio, massive major no cable microphone, the best kept secret from today's press conference. We got the shotgun, so you shouldn't be able to hear everything around me nearly as well as you did a minute ago, and that's good. When you want to act, when you when you want it to act like a shotgun mic, it's supposed to act like a shotgun mic. After I hear some results from other users, and maybe when I can do some more testing of my own with it. I'm pretty sure we'll be calling it a game changer from the standpoint of overall quality and usability in its tidy and elegant package. Sony's showing no signs of slowing down with their in-camera and on-camera innovations. Their reputation company-wide is as a technology and entertainment company that will stop at nothing to be out front to be number one. For us photographers, that's really good. It means they're listening and they're acting and reacting based on what we want and what they know how to deliver. Sometimes they know what we want before we do, which is what makes Sony different. If this sounds like a Sony commercial, believe me, I'm as surprised as you are. I went into this fully expecting to come home to the cameras that we own and really not think twice about this camera. But I keep thinking about the Mark IV a lot. I do want to emphasize something. Because this camera is available for pre-order right now, but not generally available yet, you might hear some buzz from the press who was at the event about some issues with the autofocus. I did have a sequence of images where the camera was showing me that the eye autofocus was spot on in camera, but the final results were out of focus. Some slightly, some more than slightly. Sony's on it. These capabilities are defined by software, and software can be updated, sometimes very quickly. So I don't anticipate any issues working their way into the final production units. Sony just usually doesn't let that happen. I'm not trying to introduce doubt in Sony here. I want to be really careful about this. This is a credit to their responsiveness as a brand. Problems will certainly happen with any type of electronics. The key for me is how a company handles those problems. Another thing you have to take into account, this is a 61 megapixel sensor. Your one divided by the focal length calculation for shutter speed can be a little bit short sometimes. And you need to think, well, is that out of focus or is that a little bit of motion blur that I would not see in a 20 megapixel camera because this just resolves more of what the camera's seeing. I've talked a lot about autofocus and the tracking and that is the hot topic in general, but I haven't discussed image quality. I haven't run across a camera in the last few years that had poor image quality. So let's get that out of the way. But yes, image quality on the Alpha 7 R Mark IV is stellar. I didn't do tests all the way up the ISO range. We were frantically going around uh, during this couple of days. But in my real use of the camera, the higher ISO sensitivities still gave me completely acceptable, beautiful 
images. This is the most advanced camera I've ever held in my hand. Does that mean you need to get rid of what you have now and get this camera? Like I said, every camera I have picked up in the last five to seven years has worked amazingly. I'm happy to shoot my Nikons. I'd be happy to shoot a Sony. If you want the best, most technologically advanced full frame camera out there, this is probably it, the Sony. If you want to take pictures with what you have now or what your chosen brand has put onto the market, that will probably also work great for you. I'm putting a link to sort of a resource page down below. It's where I'm going to keep my information together on this camera. I'm going to include in there links to other videos from other press who were at this event and took pictures themselves and have provided their impressions. I'm going to provide a download link where you can download some JPEG images that I took and give them close scrutiny. Uh, those will be out of the camera. I'm not claiming that they're all perfect. I'm not claiming that my technique on a Sony was rock solid and I always had the ideal shutter speed and the ideal aperture. So take it as it is. And I'm going to grow that page as we learn more about the camera also. Thanks everybody. If you have any questions that I didn't cover, things that you wanna know, I'll either give you an answer from my own experience and if I don't have the experience to answer your question, I'll try to find somebody who can. Thanks everybody. Have a great day.